Now, a few years before the Michelson Morley experiment, in 1871, Airy, who was the Astronomer Royal, carried out an experiment to see whether we were moving through the ether and the starlight coming down the telescopes uh, was stationary and it was we who were doing the moving or whether perhaps we were on a stationary earth and it was the starlight passing across us that was producing um, what is known as Bradley's uh, experiment in which if you have a vertical tube of telescope pointing directly upward to a star then the light and the star was stationary then the light would come straight down through the centre of the telescope and be registered in the eyepiece. Now, supposing you started moving the telescope at, let's say, five miles an hour. And therefore, in order for that light to be still registered in the centre of the telescope, you would have to tilt your telescope in order to allow for your movement as the starlight is travelling down <coughs> through the telescope. And let's say that at five miles an hour you had to tip your telescope forward about five degrees. Now let's consider the possibility that it's not the telescope that's doing the moving on the Earth, but it is the starlight coming in at an angle because it is the starlight that is moving with the ether as the ether goes past the telescope. Again, you would have to, if it was the same speed, you would have to tip the telescope by about five degrees in order to register that starlight in the centre of the telescope. However, you can't tell when the telescope is tilted at five degrees whether it is the telescope moving or whether it is the starlight moving. But there is one very simple change that you can make that checks out whether the uh, telescope is moving or the star and what you have to do is just simply fill the telescope with water. That slows down the <coughs> starlight through the telescope very much more. Now, if it is the Earth that is moving, you would then have to uh, tip the telescope from, let's say, 5 degrees and increase it more to 10 degrees because it's now travelling slower as it moves down the telescope and you would have to tip the telescope a little further. But if the starlight is already coming in at 5 degrees and it is simply slowed down, you don't have to tip the telescope any further. And therefore, you can find out whether you, the telescope is moving or the starlight. And Airy filled the telescope with water and compared it with previous measurements of the same star and he did not have to tip that telescope any further than in the previous set of readings when the telescope was without water. And that showed very clearly that it was not the telescope that was moving, but the starlight and the ether was moving relative to a stationary telescope. Now because he didn't get the results that was expected, it was called Aries failure. And the interesting thing is that if you read his report, it is very short and there is not a single mention of the significance of that experiment. It is purely talking about the various uh, accuracies of the, of the um, experiment that he made. Nothing about the amazing conclusion that comes from Aries' failure, i.e. that it is the telescope that is stationary, and the starlight coming in is coming in at an angle, which doesn't change when you fill the telescope with water. The second experiment I want to talk about was carried out by Michelson and Gale in 1925. They set up four tubes in a big rectangle in a field in Chicago and tested as to whether the Earth is rotating um, um, at the so-called so 24 hours uh, a day. To everybody's surprise, and again it's one of those experiments that is not often referred to, hardly ever, they found that they could record that the ether was moving across the face of the Earth 
within 2% of the calculated figure of 24 hours per day. Therefore, the either the ether is going past the Earth and the Earth is stationary, or the ether is stationary and we are turning inside the ether. That is the surprising result that they measured it within 2% of the expected value. In 1905, Einstein produced his theory of relativity, which got rid of this problem of the ether, and he just simply abolished it. The problem was it made so many difficulties for the physicists and the astronomers that in the abolishing of the ether, he made himself a very complicated and really quite self-contradictory theory of relativity. However, in 1913, Sanyak carried out a simple experiment in a laboratory. He had a turntable and he passed a beam of light round clockwise round one way and another beam of light anti-clockwise round the other way and then compared them when they came back to the uh, measuring uh, centre. And as he turned this table at only two revs per second, he found that he could measure the fact of the light travelling in different directions, recorded different fringes, that is the way they measure them, on his uh, experiment. Easily showing that, frankly, there was an ether, and that the light had to go with it or against it as it travelled round the turntable. And this, ultimately, really, completely demolished the theory of relativity which had already abolished the ether. From Sanyat's experiment and many others carried out like it since, the ether clearly does exist. And it is a framework against which we can see whether we are moving against that framework of the ether or not. And therefore, the result that Michelson and Morley got that we were not travelling round the sun at 30 kilometres per second is absolutely valid. We are not travelling around the sun. Now remember that those three experiments that I have spoken about are never ever taught in universities anywhere around the world.